Welcome everyone to another live Q&A video from Stack Culture. Today it's chapter 5, the one we're talking, which happened to be in Leon. We hunted uh, Leon, which is on north middle part of Spain and in the southern part of Picos de Europa, which is probably one of the most beautiful areas, in my opinion, that you can hunt on. Because the, it's like true mountains, like it's rocky terrain. It has a Samoa, Cantabrian Samoa, which, which is the smallest Samoa subspecies in the world. And you are basically hunting the, the stacks roaring. And, and I think in one of the episodes on, on the day we shoot the big stack, we had some footage of the stack roaring with Samoa around him. So that was super unique. The, Bad thing that it happened to us is that we there was a big weather forecast uh, announced and the weather was gonna be really bad and that that changed I think the whole how the whole project developed from then on because the weather the temperature dropped super super hard the weather was terrible and that changed the rat completely on the first day that we arrived after traveling from the Pyrenees which was a huge a uh, huge drive. Uh, we saw some uh, a really nice stack that the guys. The, the good thing on some areas in Spain is that the local guides, uh, by the time you arrive there, uh, especially on a project like ours that we were on a kind of on a rush to go to one place to the other, they had already located a pretty awesome stack. And that day that we arrived, we we were able to see the stack. It was a Super long, not many points, but like heavy and thick. So awesome stack. We had a kind of an opportunity. I could have probably pushed it a little bit. But the thing is that the day we arrived, I was not feeling like shooting an animal, which is sometimes it turns to be a big mistake. When you have a good opportunity on the first day, just take it because it might be the, the only opportunity that you get, especially, uh, hours that we knew that the bad weather was coming but that being said i i took the risk i didn't want to shoot the first afternoon another stack because we already have hunted a lot and i kind of wanted to spend a little bit more time in leon to to enjoy that time that time there so we left it for the following day the following day we woke up uh, and it was already snowy and um, windy and horrible day to hunt but we kind of had an idea of where the stack was bedded. So we just climbed there, waited, and there was a very, like a tiny forest. It was maybe 500 meters for per 200 meters. So kind of a sm really a small area. And inside that forest, there was like at least three or four stacks roaring. And it was a mess. Like uh, we knew, we kind of thought that the stack had to be there. But with so many animals to get inside the forest was, and with the camera, the two camera guys, the guy, the outfitter, it was going to be just too many people. But I was thinking on the other side, like we would have been the perfect opportunity to hunt with the bow inside that forest. We, the only option that we had was to wait outside. Roaring or anything it will, was not working because if the stack is already with the female, you just, the stack is not going to come out of their of its forest with the females to try to to chase you around so we waited for four hours and or four hours and a half like a lot of time it was super cold super windy and when you are so much time still we were all freezing but the pacing paid off and and the stack ended up coming out and giving us a, an opportunity which uh, after such a long time, it was awesome to, to experience. And according to Joaquin, it was the first time ever he's, he has seen the local uh, game warden to, to shiver and to be cold in his life. So it was pretty cool. I made one of the lessons learned is to never forget the down jacket, the insulation clothing, because it's super light and it's really, there is not an excuse to leave it at home. But for some reason, I forgot it in the car because I used it the day uh, earlier and the day before that day and end up not bringing it on my pack. And instead of being super comfortable and 
uh, being able to be there for five hours, no problem. I was also freezing on on the mountain as as well as everyone. So it was not a big difference. The it was it turned out to be the biggest tag I have ever shot my myself, which I was pretty stoked. But I think one of the lessons that you could learn from the episodes is that the trophy size was not important. The stack we saw it the day earlier, and if we would have shot that same stack the day earlier, the experience will be completely different. But as the hunt was way more challenging and it pro- we had to work harder for that trophy, the animal ended up meaning way more to us than, than what it would have been if we would have shot it right away. So I think that's a good example of why the trophy is not is not important. Also on the series, on this chapter, you can see that we went to a hunting museum, which was magnificent. They have a lot of taxidermy. You can see animals from all over the world, which is super unique. But for me, the most unique part is the how they have these mock-ups of, of bone structure and of different animals that you can see the different bones and the legs and the sizes and all that, which was very nice to see and to learn and if you have checked if you haven't checked that episode i will highly recommend to check it because you can clearly see how the bone structure of a stag is how the bone structure of a wild boar or even how small a samoa is like we tend to think that samoa are really big but when you see it in person the bone structure is just like this big so it makes you think a lot and especially if you hunt with a bow but also if you hunt with a rifle it's it's very interesting to to know. We end up going after that day back home, uh, drop Lewis because Lewis, one of the two camera guys, was leaving back home. He couldn't stay uh, that long. Uh, prepare all the meat, get ready, and head into the next chapter, which is the chapter that is currently running on our YouTube channel, which is chapter six in Palencia, the final chapter, where we are back on our own, Jack and I, and we are hunting with bow. So hope you guys are liking. We are already have released a couple of episodes and hope that even until this point we haven't shot anything with the bow, you are still enjoying the process and seeing what real hunting is that you cannot always shoot on, on video. So let's do some of the questions that let's go over some of the questions from the Instagram live that you guys are asking and some from the YouTube channel. Behind the camera is Victoria, my wife, which is managing, Hello. is the brain behind everything. So, do you want to start from Instagram? Yeah. Um, Javier, what did you hunt in this chapter with the 270 Winchester? Mm, just to, to change. Uh, we, It's my favorite rifle. It's the one that I'm more used to. The 308 is one that it was brand new and it's the one that my dad used. So I decided to shoot the 270, but no, not a special reason. And Lopez Alex related to that. He's asking if you use the 270 or the 270 Magnum. I'm shooting the 270 Winchester, the normal one. Fair MH91, big fan of your hands, but I'm still waiting a proper trophy check. Perhaps a video check in trophies plus the hand behind? Like a trophy check in terms of like a measuring the animal or I'm not sure what you refer to a trophy check. So let's go through some of the questions from that you guys have been commenting on the videos on our YouTube channel. Javier Reyes, hunting area in León was private or managed by the town? So the hunting area in León, I'm not sure if it was private or managed by the town. I think it was managed by the town, but sold to a private guy that manages the the, the hunting on that area. From Javier too, what's the first thought when you know you harvested the stack? You harvested the stack, sorry. So the first thought was like, finally, we can move because we were all freezing. But it was like very special because of the place and not because, I mean, the trophy size was important, but the place and the hunt uh, was super unique. What area you hunted in? I hunted in the north of Boñar. Boñar is probably the biggest town around. So you kind of have a rough idea. I'm not saying the exact location because that's not that's typical. It's a secret. <laughs> also, Javier Reyes is asking in the live if this was the biggest stack shot during stack culture. 
So far, yes. Maybe we saw a bigger one with a bow in the last chapter, but so far it was the, the biggest tag. Are Jack and Lewis hunters? Did they hold the call properly? Both Jack and Lewis are uh, passionate hunters and and they love also, they are the ones that have been filming the whole hunt and they hold the call with attitude. Like they were freezing, but they didn't, they, they never complained. So it's pretty cool. The, the guy that asked about the trophy check is saying that no. Trophy measurement just showing all your trophies, plus telling us the story behind all that. But that's not a star culture. <laughs> maybe maybe I do for, for YouTube in the future checking the trophies, but the thing is that I have most of my trophies split into my between my parents' house, our house, and I don't have them all together, but I'll take note. Mm, Jim Hill Hunt, why do you carry a couple of rifles during hunt? Why we carry two rifles? It's because we we were generating content for brands with both both rifles so it was not i mean one rifle was definitely enough but since there were two models we we used those hands also to create content for companies and we needed to create content with both how many hectares was the property can't can't remember i don't know how big it was but those areas are big and completely open jeff smith which outfitter did you use we hunted on this hunt, on any of the hunts, if you go to the video and go on the description below, I think I put the name of the outfitter in all of them with a link to their website in, in case you want to check them out. But in this particular case, we hunted with Joaquin Badillo from Big Hunting Spain, which is a good friend of mine, and and I highly recommend you guys to check him out. What's the range of prices of that type of stock? The range of prices... It's hard to say because it depends on the area. It, it really depends also on the quality of the stack. It depends if you go with one outfitter or the other. But I will say for people looking into hunting a stack in Spain of that range, the cost of the tag, plus, I mean, like the hotel and all that will not be included. I will say that goes between 2000 to 3000 or something like that. That will be the, the range. So. Or more rural lenses. Why didn't you try in such a broken terrain the bow? I would have loved to hunt with the bow more often, but on, on that hunt we only have a, had a couple of days uh, or three days to hunt. And I had my hunting area at the end of the trip that I could spend as much time as I wanted. So I kind of left the final chapter and the first chapter to hunt with the bow, spend more time than it's needed, it's required with the bow. And kind of enjoy it and use the middle hands, which you are more on a rush to hunt with a rifle, that you have higher chances of getting the content uh, a bit quicker. Joaco Garcia, when do you choose or why sometimes rifle or bow? The reason when to choose a bow or rifle, it's a matter of time and on the terrain. I mean, if I have time and I'm hunting by myself, I typically like and enjoy hunting with a bow because I don't care if I hunt or not. But when when you are producing uh, videos and documentaries the, and some areas are tough and you have limited time, the rifle, it's as fun as hunting with a bow and and it, it's a bit easier in that sense. Javier Apo, from 1 to 10, how big was the mistake of forgetting the down layers? <laughs> 11. In, in that moment, 11. <laughs> But we were more or less all the same. So I think we were all thinking, which is going to be the first guy on the group saying that, let's get out of here. And we will be all like, yeah, yeah, let's get out of here. It's useless. But no one said that, that sentence, which was pretty good. And we hold tight. And the same guy, what gear did you use in this chapter? As a reference, uh, we were using... Kuyu, solid colors that a bunch of you guys asked which color was the, the jacket. It's us. And we were using the Kutana Storm Cell jacket and pant. That's the rainproof jacket and pant. Uh, and inside we were using the Kinai and the Pro Pant. That's all from uh, now. I'm going to read some of the questions they are asking in on Instagram. Thanks everyone that is joining and staying there on Instagram asking. 
question and supporting the, the project. Javier again Reyes is asking why did you choose those places to hunt and why did you not go anywhere in, in the south? We didn't go anywhere in the south because I'm not sure why. Uh, we had to choose some specific areas and I love the the north, I love the mountains and that's why probably we, we chose so many mountain hunts. Kiko Fidalgo, are you going to repeat next year Star Culture Project? We are trying to. We are trying to see how to make the project feasible and how to, because it has been a lot of work and, but we appreciate all the support. That means a lot and that helps us explain the value behind the project and hopefully we find ways to, to make it happen again. Hunting a snake. When hunting with a bow, do you sometimes wish to have taken a rifle with you? <laughs> Not really. I mean, if I hunt with a bow, I hunt with a bow. I don't care. I don't bring the rifle. Like, I, I'm i not really... I don't have that much anxiety to kill an animal anymore. So, if... I don't I don't bring both. So, I, I, I'm over that phase. But there is always a phase in a bow hunter's life that you are in between the rifle and the bow all the time. But you need to assume that you may don't shoot anything and just focus on trying to make it happen with the bow. Katie, 1985, where did you bought that call you have for the uh, for the rat? I brought it I bought it on 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 a game show in on on a trade show in Germany and and the call in terms of the call, I highly recommend you guys to wait a little bit because we may have surprises. <laughs> <laughs> don't buy any gold yet so if there is no more questions on the live video let's give away some stuff so giveaway on this chapter we're giving away from, uh, stuff from Svarovsky which in particular is a package with a hat negator proper way to show the cup <laughs> Yeah, because I cannot show the cap properly because it has all the ruffle papers. A backpack or a knife and a water bottle. So And the knife? The knife is somewhere in there that I, I, <laughs> I forgot to, to pull it out. And we are giving away three packages which include th that stuff. So the way to enter on the giveaways, if you are not aware, we are picking winners from between all the comments that you are putting on the videos of each chapter. So we brought, if there were three videos on chapter five, we are picking six winners from each video. And between all those, we are giving away this this gear. And these are the finalists of, of those comments on the videos. Please, if you are on the live video on Instagram and I mention your name, raise your hand just to know if there is any of you guys on online and the names are Dan Hill, Fernando Casado, Kieran, Miguel ja Yanguas, Matt Cao, Victor Sile, Pidi González, Javier Cabestani, Donald Seppert, Jacobo Trapote, Anders Cockfeld, Tomás Marugan, Alfonso Franqueira, Rodney Smith, Juan Fran Canabete, Fabián Calvo, Zarco, Sarko Nala and Dave Clausen. So you can see here that's the list of the finalists of the video. I don't know if any of you guys are connected on last time. One of the winners was connected. Is anyone connected? Or no? no, no. So here are all the names that we mentioned, and Victoria is going to kindly pick. Three winners. So we have three papers. And the first winner of the Swarovski care package is Jacobo Trapote. Check the focus to see in the camera. Okay. Okay, Jacobo Trapote. Winner number one, winner number two, 
Javier Cabestani. ¡Oh! ¡Finally! Hello, he comments he's... in every single video and he's... The more you comment on the videos, the higher chances. So be sure to comment on every single video, like and share it. And the last winner is... Rodney Smith. So those are the three winners and we are going to take three more names just in case those guys don't want to win yeah, some. who's winning the knife from those three? The first one. <laughs> the first one is winning the knife and the other two are winning the backpack. Three more just in case no one answers. Yeah, and three more names just in case no one answers and just in case you see how close you were. Anders Kockfeld. <laughs> like that's any consolation. <laughs> Dave Clausen. And Donald Suppert. So you guys, in case the other three don't want to win the gear, <laughs> you are behind. So please, if you are, if we mention your name, please contact us via Instagram or social media, whatever you want, and we will make sure to get you some gear. And um, for chapter six, Palencia, what are we giving away? And we're giving away some Stack Culture Swag. So we are giving away some hoodies, some t shirts, and t shirts. We have a model with the bow. And also a model with the rifle. So we're going to be giving between all the comments that we get from on the videos from chapter six. We're going to send you guys some gear. In case you don't win, be sure to check on every video, the description. We are putting the link to the Hunt Epic website, which is from the guys from Slots Media, which are, which are producing these t-shirts. We have t-shirts with the bow, with the rifle, hoodies, different colors, different sizes. So be sure to check them out. It helps us uh, bring you guys this content. So we highly appreciate everyone that it's, has already bought one. And, and be sure to, to comment on the follow, following videos to have a chance to, to win. I'm not sure if there is any further questions or not from, from the guys on Instagram. Al comer es vivir. He's asking about what bipod to use on a Sour 101 Highland. Or what would you recommend? I'm not sure. I think the Sour 101 Highland, uh, we love the Spartan bi uh, bipod the, with the one with the tag legs, the Pro Hunt, which is the one we use. And But I'm not sure which type of adapter you will need for the Highland because I'm not sure if... It has a normal adapter, the type of stock, if you can drill the quick connector from Spartan, but I ha we highly recommend the Pro Hunt with tag legs. That's works phenomenal. Okay, so thanks everyone that joined on the Instagram live. Uh, highly appreciate all the support. Thanks everyone that is commenting on all the videos, especially the ones that are sharing the videos on Instagram, it help us reach more people and it help us, uh, it helps the project. So highly appreciate it. We are here for whatever you need. If in case the road deer season has already opened on your country, good luck out there. If you are in the South America and you are hunting the rat, just let you guys know that we will be hopefully next year in South America this time of the year to be able to enjoy the, the rat more time and that's all thanks thanks for joining and for subscribing and and all that so have a great day thank you